we'll see one architecture which is called von Neumann architecture. This one is called stored program computer. This one also called stored program computer. Two key properties. It has two key properties. One stored program and then sequential instruction processing. What is stored program? Instruction stored in a linear array. So let's say uh, this is an array. So instructions are stored in this array. So and memory is unified between instruction and uh, and data, which means we do not have separate instructions for data and separate instruction for. Uh, uh, sorry, we do not have separate memory for data and we do not have separate memory for instruction. Both of them are stored in the same memory. The interpretation of a stored value depends on the control signal, which means control signal uh, decides which one is data and which one is stored. Now, the second part is sequential instruction processing, which means one instruction process at a time. Uh, and program counter instruction pointer identifies the current instruction and program counter expects to control the transfer of instruction. Now this means that sequential instruction processing if this is uh, it goes like this uh, sorry it goes like this from here to here here to here here to here and so on that means after this instruction is processed it goes here then it goes here then it goes here unless unless there is any control instruction which means there is any branch or jump instruction so it is like sequential execution and so from here this this memory location the program uh, the the con uh, the next instru instruction would come from this uh, this instruction uh, sorry this location program counter would track that that means program counter would tell the system that once you are done executing instruction that is in this memory location go to this memory location and execute this instruction once you are done then execute this location and uh, uh, take this look uh, uh, instruction at uh, this location and execute and so on unless we have any kind of branching instruction associated with, uh, with it or we need to have we need to take a branch let's see the diagram this is the diagram of von Neumann architecture as you can see this is the memory and this memory is uh, a, like we, we have the uh, memory address register and data register both um, both instruction and data are in the same same uh, memory location uh, so you have the same bus for accessing data and memory and then we have other part control unit input output this is what von Neumann model uh, would look like. Uh, other than von Neumann model, we have model which is called Harvard architecture. In Harvard architecture, if we compare the von Neumann model and the Harvard architecture, then we will see that in the von Neumann model, we, we had only one memory and that is used for both data and instruction. But for Harvard architecture, we have different data memory and instruction memory and they have different bus. The benefit here is uh, the bus length could be different for data we could use a bigger bus and for memo instruction uh, we could use smaller bus but for uh, 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 one new one architecture the bus length was fixed so data and memory has to be of the same length so this gives flexibility but this is a more complex design this is more complex design uh, so uh, but uh, with harvard architecture when we are performing memory uh, data operation then we cannot execute instruction uh, or instruction operation we cannot fetch any instruction but for harvard architecture parallelly we can we could use data we could access data memory as well as instruction memory so this is one benefit of harvard architecture more detail of the harvard architecture are given in these two slides so you can go through that now uh, last thing that we'll be uh, discussing in this chapter or in this slide is the RIS and SIS architecture. RIS is reduced instruction set architecture and SIS complex instruction set architecture. You could see the differences. I am not going to, uh, to the detail of these differences. You could see it by yourself, but I'm just uh, briefly describing what this uh, RIS we will be using a uh, RIS architecture or, or MIPS, uh, the architecture MIPS that we are going to discuss in this course is a RIS architecture which is reduced instruction set computer and and the architecture x86 is a sys uh, architecture which is 
more uh, complex. RIS is mainly used in embedded system for special uh, specific purpose computer design and CIS are more general purpose computer design. There are other, uh, other issues, there are other differences which are uh, highlighted in this uh, slide, you could see it. So, if we conclude this, this slide, this lecture, then we would see that uh, we, we covered that cost and performance is improving due to underlying technology developments. Since the technology is changing and it is getting cheaper and cheaper, so cost performance is also, cost per performance is getting also cheaper. Hierarchical layers of abstraction, there are layers of abstraction. So, abstraction, what abstraction does, abstraction helps user uh, to communicate or interact with the system more easily than instruction set architecture which uh, is which uh, actually uh, our high level program gets translated into uh, based on the instruction set architecture our high level program gets translated into assembly code and then execution time best performance measure and power is limiting factor 